So the weather these days, I've been following a sort of pattern that most of the day is overcast and later in the afternoon, the sky just opens up with sunshine and beautiful clouds. And this sky looks even more inspiring than it looks in this video. And I'm gonna sketch it in my art journal. This kind of scenery deserves a full page sketch. So before I start drawing with my waterproof ink pen, I'd like to spend a minute or two to visualize the size and placement with hand gestures. And because I'm gonna include a large area of sky, that means the houses and the rooftops are pretty low on the page. So now, as you can see, I'm starting to draw the outline of the rooftops and the chimney. Just the outlines, not too much details, and the trees behind. So at this stage, I'm just looking at things at their largest shapes. The largest shapes, not being overwhelmed by the details. Now I need to put my pen away and just start painting right now because the clouds are moving away really fast. I don't know what's gonna it's gonna look after five minutes. So I'm just gonna paint now and finish the details later. The houses won't change. And so I just wetted the sky area with clear water. Now I just grab some lemon yellow and mix in lots of water. Lots of water. And just to show the sunshine tone on the clouds. And now I just just putting on some cerulean blue mixed with a bit of ultramarine blue. Just painting very loosely with my watery Hobain brand water brush. Just following what I see instead of you know giving too much judgment on how to paint. Just following what I see I'm moving my my brush with lots of sensations about what I see and also what I feel. Let go of being tight and being judged about being accurate. Just let those things go. Just follow my feelings. Okay, so now I'm done with the blue sky area and now I'm mixing the shade color for the uh, yellow tinted clouds. So now I just mixed ultramarine blue with purple to get this purple blue color. I just love this color so much. As you can see, it's wet on wet and I just created some really soft feathery effects. It's very random, it's not exactly the same as the real cloud shade in the sky, but it captures something, a very energetic nature about those clouds. And again, because these clouds are moving so fast, every 20 to 30 seconds or so, their shapes look very different than before. So I kind of have to use my memory a bit to paint these shades. It's not possible at all to, um, you know, paint exactly as they are. Just like any other phenomenon in the world, everything is always changing, moving or decaying. Nothing really stays the same, so we don't really need to cling to their exact shapes and forms. We have to follow a lot of our sensations to do art. We need to express bravely 
instead of trying to be coffee machines. And so now I'm adding some even darker shades of purple blue around the horizon and also for the clouds lower in the sky because I see darker tones over there. And again, don't rely on the reference photo on the upper corner because that's from many minutes ago. The clouds are looking very different now. The shades are darker. Yeah, and so as you can see, I'm using very limited colors. To paint these clouds, I simply use a bit of um, lemon yellow for the first layer and for their shades. I just simply mix a variety of different proportions of uh, ultramarine blue and purple. The more blue I mix in, the more bluish it looks. And the more purple I mix in, the more purple blue it looks. So we don't have to use too many colors. There's a sense of um, unity when we use limited colors. Just doing some little polish, adding some bright lemon yellow around the horizon because this is almost sunset hour. The uh, sunshine near the horizon is very bright. Mixing a little bit orange there, just a tiny bit. And now just doing the last bit of final polish, just by just want, I want to put some more um, yellow tone for the clouds there. This is how I sense right now. The clouds are getting more yellow tones as time is going into the late afternoon. Okay, I'm done with the sky. So now I'm gonna finish drawing the uh, line works of the houses below. Now I can just take my time because the sky is done and the house is much more stable objects compared to the sky. So yeah, a lot easier. Just fill in those larger shapes with smaller shapes. Just finishing drawing the chimneys and the wood pieces covering the exterior of the houses. Because I've been drawing this view so many times over the past 10 years, I'm very familiar on how to simplify these things and sketch very quickly. So as you can see, after the broad outline of the rooftops and moving in into smaller shapes like the triangles of the rooftop structures and then the rectangles of the uh, house structures below the roof and even smaller rectangles are the windows now i'm just adding those textures for the rooftops a lot of parallel lines and keep adding more simple smaller shapes Lots of windows. I like coloring the windows with solid black so the houses look they have more density. And also this takes quite a bit of patience. Lots of repetition, a lot of similar shapes. So usually I don't include the uh, little maple trees in front of these houses when doing smaller sketches so now because i'm doing a full page spread i think i can include these because it adds more interest to this large page space if i add these to a smaller sketch the sketch will look too messy but for this one i think it will be okay and it's also a really nice um, nice thing to add something organic in front of uh, these human-made houses. Again, I started working with the large branches and then added the smaller twigs. Of course, I'm not drawing every single twig that's out there, it's too much. Just kind of summarizing the form very quickly. And now I'm ready to paint again. Burnt sienna mixed with uh, ultramarine blue to paint the rooftops. and mixing yellow ochre with green to get this um, these houses exterior color they have a kind of yellow green tone 
and pretty watery too. And add using leftover color, the dark blue, to paint the shade areas of these houses. And I just mix burnt sienna with viridian green and some leftover blue to paint the dark silhouette shapes of the trees behind these houses. Now, and now there's more sense of distance in this sketch because I just painted the dark trees behind the houses. Pretty interesting element even though they're very small shapes. And just adding further shades using leftover colors on my palette for the windows and for each area of the houses because those they have three-dimensional prism and cube shapes. And just use burnt sienna to paint the tree branches and twigs using my thin Sakura water brush. Just mainly painting the thick branches. And also holding my brush almost 90 degrees to the paper so the brush lines are very very thin the angle of holding a brush is very important to control line widths okay i think that's pretty much it for this sketch just adding a bit of a darker tone for the branches because they're in the very foreground they need some more tones it's a bit more shade for the windows here and there and that's it and here's the look of my finished sketch and it took me 30 minutes to finish drawing and painting everything i had a really nice calm meditative time standing by the window all right now it's time for a cup of coffee and the slice of cake roll so I just envisioned the size and placement of this box of cake roll on a white space first, just to make sure I don't draw way too big or too small. So the cover, the plastic cover, is roughly a shape of a prism. And the tray on the bottom too, it just divided from the cover. Just a different thing. And add some details for the side of the tray and now I'm starting to draw the cake roll seeing through the transparent plastic cover it's also a very round prism shape very much like a cylinder laying down and now I'm just drawing these chocolate patches very cute and adding a few broken lines here and there to show the shiny streak of the plastic and also gives the plastic cover more three dimension. Okay, that's it for the drawing part of the tray of cake roll. And now I'm drawing my cup. It's a cylinder shape and I need to draw the rim. And that's it. Just quickly writing down the time and a little note. Okay, so I just felt like just adding a few more little details for the cover, there's just a plastic sticker with a brand of the bakery. Yeah, and that's it. And now I'm ready to paint watercolors again. So just wetting the whole area of the cake roll with clear water so the colors can spread out easily. Same for the cup. And now I'm laying down the lightest tone is lemon yellow, very much diluted because the cake is, um, contains a lot of eggs, so it looks yellowish. A very pale kind of yellow. And the middle part, the cream, I just want to leave it white. Grabbing some yellow ochre, mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna for the first layer of the coffee. wetting the exterior of the cup and adding a shade color with ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit purple 
leaving some shiny streaks to show the bright spots of the ceramic. And same colors for the plastic. This bluish tone, it's just very useful for painting white objects and plastic. And now I am grabbing some purple, mixing in ultramarine blue and a little bit burnt sienna to paint this dark brown, to paint these dark brown patches, these chocolate prints on the surface of the cake roll. Very cute. Just a little bit of um, shade color for the cream part. And for this side of the cake roll, because it's away from the light source, the light comes from the right. So this side is in shade with a little bit leftover blue tone over the yellow. And mix in burnt sienna into the leftover purple blue to add a second layer for the surface of the coffee, just to give it a more contrast and shine and more purple blue for the plastic tray using very thin strokes as you can see i'm leaving little areas of bright spots to show the shine of plastic and just diluting a little bit more water into the paint and just add tiny bits for the cover the cover is very transparent and so I'm keeping the shade color very diluted. And just now I want to add another layer of more solid brown with less water and more paint pigment. As you can see, I'm leaving little streaks of bright stripes on, the, uh, on these um, brown spots to show the shine of plastic. This is kind of like an illusion. The spots look shiny, but it's actually the plastic that shines. So painting techniques can be easy and it's really important on how we make easy decisions because sometimes we just feel so insecure about making easy decisions. A lot of times easy decisions can bring good results. We don't need very challenging techniques to do good paintings. So now I'm just adding another layer of dark purple blue tone for the exterior of the cup, just to give it more contrast. And a little bit more yellow tone for the outside of the cake row, just to make it more attractive. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. And now I'm ready to paint their shadows using leftover color, mix of ultramarine blue and purple. So I just wetted the edges first with clear water and just adding this color dark around the edges. And that's my finished sketch. Now I'm ready to enjoy my coffee and the slice of cake roll. This took me about 15 minutes. My coffee was way too hot to drink. So yeah, now it's just warm enough. And here's the look of my finished art journal spread. Later on, I spent just five minutes to sketch that little square of little landscape of the uh, sunset sky outside my window. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And just a quick announcement that I will be teaching another round or four live sessions in February. So if you want some more inspirations and seeing me work in real life speed and asking questions as I go, you can just sign up for this live event. I look forward to seeing you.